Thanks for joining. Today we have uh, a DNA scripting session. Today uh, we have day number 10. And today we are going to learn all, all these scripts, some of the scripts I have developed. And I'm going to share those scripts with you. Apart from that, we'll go and run the aura report as well. Aura report is something like readiness report. The DNA is ready to upgrade or not, or is ready to do some uh, feature update in the DNA. So those things we have in this aura report. So step by step, we'll go and understand those things. So let's, first of all, let's go and check this API thing. We have this uh, small document, um, 50 slides document, where it will tell you that in DNA, we have intent-based APIs. APIs, uh, and if you go and see the evolution of API, you will find that we have started with CLI, command line interfaces, then we uh, move to GUI, and now we have API. So we have started with CLI, then after some point of time, you have seen GUI. Why GUI become popular? Because if you go and check security devices, security appliances, it's very difficult to uh, do the configuration with respect to CLI because those security appliances, they have n number of lines of configuration. And if you do via CLI, this is not that is not that much efficient and someone has to memorize all those CLI commands. Then we have GUI. Even in DNA, you can see with DNA, we can do multiple things. If we have to do all these things from CLI, it will be very difficult. So that's why we have the evolution of GUI. But all these SDN framework, they are coming with some programming interfaces. And they are API uh, aware, application programming interface. So what is API? If you go and check the definition of API, it will tell you that it's machine to machine language. Like one machine can run the program to other machine, like uh, human interventions are not that much required if we go and do some sort of automation. Embed our automation is script with APIs. So it will be by very, uh, it will be very much machine to machine interaction. Although if you see this GUI, and CLI, they are very much uh, a human to machine interaction. GUI, CLI is a little bit closer to the human to machine. It's a little bit closer to the hardware. Rather than this GUI, you have to go and do some instruction with GUI. So that will be very much user friendly, the UF user friendly. And then it will be converted in some programming language, and then it will push to machine. So flow is like this. Michael's, Michael said that he's in the lobby. Oh, oh OK, OK. I haven't seen it. OK, so interaction is like this, that uh, CLI, GUI, and API. And uh, we are going to focus on this. Uh, uh, API part. So let's focus on this API. Now, once we'll go and do this API scripting within DNA, whatever things we can do via CLI and GUI, we can do via API as well. Each and everything we can do via API. And you will see that we have different uh, purpose APIs there in DNA. So actually we have all purpose uh, APIs, the instruction, machine to machine instruction, instruction inside the DNA. So let's go to the DNA dashboard and let's see where we can go and check this API. Now, again, I told you that it's a very much programming thing. So, if you go and learn the API and that uh, that introduction I'm going to give you that what are the main things within the API, what are the methods within the API, but API is very much similar that whatever you are doing in the web browser. So when, when we are surfing internet, we are going to different, different websites. When you are going to different, different websites, you are going on top, that is the URL. And within that you are, you are putting some command uh, you want to see some web pages or website and those things. For that, you are using some methods. So some methods are there 
those methods are basically four methods are there. And mm -hmm. if you go and compare those methods with uh, CLI, you'll come to know. So CLI, what we are doing, we are typing something show run. In API, this is something get method. In CLI, when you are doing some configuration, configuration in API, this is called as a post method that you are creating new object. Post means creation of new object. Then in uh, CLI, if you have to go and do some patches, CLI based patch, In some command uh, repairing and some small modification in the configuration lines. Here we have something called put put method means update an object. And finally, in CLI, if you go and delete something, delete here also you have delete operation. That means delete delete an object. So these four methods are there. Technically, they are very much like we are doing in CLI. You have get object to show the things. You have post to update an object. You have put, post means create an object. It's like creation. Put means update. And then finally delete. That means you know that delete, delete an object. So these four main methods we have that you want to operate from the API. These are the API methods. So if you go to DNA, and once you are in the DNA, then here we are. And uh, what you need to do, you go to menu, system, data platform. Once you come here, you can see all these uh, analytic ops collectors. They are the collectors and services for different, different things. You can see the setting and pipelines. Pipelines are like continuous integration, uh, continuous development, CICD pipelines are there. So in the next update, when Cisco will go and put update the packages, they will go and update the packages for these programs that you will see within the data platform. Let's go back to the platform where you can go and see the API thing. So within platform, you can see that we have API. And now you will see here that we have API for almost everything. So here you can see that authentication based APIs, then know your network, site management, connectivity, operational tasks, policy, event management. If I go and click anywhere, you will see that these are sites related API. So post, get, post, get, get means show run type of command. Post means object, uh, update, sorry, create an object. Put means update an object. Even you can see update site. Put means updating something. Like that, you can go and uh, use this API. Now, one thing you may be wondering that, okay. So when I'm telling you about post method, this post here. So let me go and write here. So when we are talking about post method, that means that we are creating something, site hierarchy or uh, discovery, anything, any creation will be done via the post method. But the question here is that how you will provide the input? How you will go and create a site. So for example, I have to go and create a site like this, USA under USA, San Jose under San Jose, for example, building one under building one, if I have to create floor one, 
and fluid too. This is something that uh, with GUI, we are going to design section, site hierarchy, and we are creating, we are clicking, clicking, click, 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 we are creating. That means you need some sort of input to this API. Right, so there there are various methods that you can go and provide the input. One of the best input is in the form of JSON. You can go and give the data encoding or input in terms of JSON, in terms of XML. But the easiest and the popular that everyone is using is JSON. We'll see that in JSON format, you can go and provide the input. So what is the JSON format? Can I show you this JSON format? Answer is yes. So let me quickly show you the JSON format. Now, these are the APIs. Even you can go on top and you can search something. So suppose if I want to see that how many network devices we have. So you can see here that with network, we have some API. Get the module info by IT, get the chassis ID, what I want, I want to see all the network devices in this DNA. So for that, you can see that we have this API get device list network device. So what I will do, I'll click here. Now this page is opening and now you can see here on top, this is the API related to what is the method get. We want some information and from this API. So if, even if I go and copy and paste this API here in the web browser, because web browsers are also working as a API collector, invalid token. They are telling that, okay, you can run this, but you have invalid token. So that's why I'm not giving you the result. No problem. We'll go and try from here. So I can go ahead and click try it. API data. It has some issue to generate this. So what we can do here, we'll go and quickly see that the API package is enabled in this DNA or not. So let's go and verify that first and then we'll come to this API and we'll see. So let's go to integrate, oops. Seems some Let's go to the platform one more time. And let's go to development toolkit. Let's go to the integration flow. Not events. Okay. Let's go to the bundles. You can see the manage bundles. Now, once you are here, you can see that AI analytic leave it, ITSM leave it. We should have API, DNA REST API is active. That's good. Then disaster recovery API, let's leave it. ITSM leave it. Network assurance bugs. So I can see that API is there, which is there, enable, which is active. Right, REST API, is, uh, which is active, yeah. So that means that it should work. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's go back to the developer toolkit. Let's go and search network. Let's go to see that where is our network devices API, I can see here. We have network devices, there it is. Get the device list, let's see. Try it. Now you can see that uh, we are getting some result. Let's click run here. Now let me go and copy this output. So this format that you will see, it is a little bit complicated type of JSON output. So even you can get the output in the JSON format, 
you can get the input means you can provide the input in the json format little bit difficult to see so let me go here and open here in the notepad now you can see this at the moment i have two devices one is isr router and one is the uh, catalyst 9300 switch so if i go and filter from host name you can see host name oh i can see it is able to search only one host that is this catalyst switch so it is able to give the device detail now you can see in this detail how much information we have serial number software version device support uptime management status boot time you can see at least 25 to 30 fields we have i think more than that fields we have yeah approx 40 fields we have in this output right so once you know programming language you can take this output as a input i told you earlier in the class that api is machine to machine language some delay is there in the notepad so api is machine to machine m to m language that means output from one api so this output can be input of other api and that's the power we have with the api and that's the key we have so output of one api can be can become input of other api and it can go and go and go and go you can nest 100 and 200 apis in one program in one single call so one program will go and call other program will go and call other and other and other and other and other, and other. like that you can nest 10 to 15 apis in our program also i will show you that uh, our programming structure is like this that we are nesting these apis within one api to other api so how we are creating big programs with respect to this programming language is this that first we are defining the defining the library so we'll go and define the library function that will be function where you have all the packages defined once we have the library then we'll go and define the Uh, you can say this as a variable variable file variable file means that what is dnac ip what is dnac url what is username what is password what is the template what is the project all the variables you can define here in the variable file then you can go and define the main function what you want to do that you can go and define in the main function so this is my main function right so what will happen the logic will be like main function will take help from variable and variable will check everything from the library even the main function will check everything from the library like that you you have some task and with this program defining in the main function you will get the result for example taking the device backup creating the sites discovering the devices doing plug and play actually each and everything i told you earlier each and everything that you can do via the CLI and GUI you can do from the programming itself. Okay. So that was the base introduction of these APIs and you have this uh, PPT. You can go through this uh, Cisco slide that you have the integration and you can go and enable the bundle. If it is not active, enable it. You can go and check the devices, the device list, some error codes are there 200 means success 400 means some error if anything related to to 200 you will see that that will be the success code so getting the output and then you can see that it's very important that first of all devices will go and do the authentication 
So the program that you are writing, it should go and authenticate first. If it will not authenticate, then you will not go to the next phase. So program will go and do the authentication and that authentication cookie, that token, you can see this X auth token, that token will be valid for first 60 minutes. After every 60 minutes, that token should refresh and we can go and set the timer as well for the token, 60 minutes or 30 minutes. But after 30 minutes, uh, sorry, after 60 minutes, if you go and run the same API, it will throw error because again it has to go and generate the token and then only it will give you the result. So these are some of the API examples you have. I'm going to show you the live example today with the program that I have, but that program itself is little bit complicated. But if you go and break that program in a small, small pieces, then you will understand that. So let me go to this. Uh, Dean and non fabric. I have one folder here where I have these scripts. So let me go here. Let me remove something so I can show you some output. Before using the program, let me go and see that what I have in my DNA, how many devices I have in the DNA, and out of those devices. Uh, how many devices they are assigned to the site. So, oh, I can see only one device. Okay, I'll go and assign this to a site. Okay, now let's go, go back to the program. I'll explain you the format of the program first, and then we'll run this. So I have actually main function. Actually, this is very big program. Uh, I'll do one thing. I'll show you some small program, and then I'll come to this. Small program means that if you go to GitHub, just go to the GitHub first the main page and on the search Cisco DNAC. If you go and search Cisco DNAC, then you will see nice programs are there. DNAC Python, DNAC platform. Uh, then, okay. This guy, his, his programs are good. Robert, he can go to repository and then Jesus put in a IAC 9k and all those things hosting Terraform. You can see it's so many programs. I'll uh, I'll show you one program that I am following, and he's a very good programmer working in Cisco, Cisco itself. His name will, should come in Cisco DNA. Anybody can access this one or need a user and password? Are you anyone can access this GitHub, right? Even mm -hmm. I haven't done done sign in. You can see you can create your account, free account, and anyone can GitHub GitHub dot com. Anyone can access the sites. Okay, now you can see that Cisco there. Uh, own programming, uh, you can see the repository they have. And in the Cisco repository, Cisco EN programmability, you can see that they have 32 repository. So you can see DNS Center with Ansible, Go programming, DNS Center day N, where they can go and do day N uh, things, Splunk integration, GitOps, Git uh, integrations, uh, compliance, Fabric, Ansible, all those things they have, Zinja, reports, operations, right? Proximity, device, config collection. Yeah, I'm following this guy. Gabriel, Japo, 
they know he's very good programmer and uh, he has very nice program so let's let's use one of his program so we are here and we want to run the program which is this one let me put this link in the chat so what you want from dna we want to take the device con collection configuration collection so you can see these are the programs here what you can do simply click to the code and uh, you have option to copy this so here you can see this copy button click there go to your cli in my laptop i have python installed if you are doing first time you install python or suppose if you don't want to install python then you do one thing you can go and install one program visual studio code visual studio code this is again this is free what you can say this program interpreter and all where you can go and write your program at the moment you'll go and install this this program itself automatically will go and install python if you're running ansible it will go and install the ansible packages and everything okay so simply you can go and uh, download this software install in your laptop and everything will be ready ready to use okay so now what we are doing here is this that we are we are going to clone one of the program right one of the program from github so what you can do you can type on command git clone and then the copy paste that we have done so now it is telling that you have this program now i can reach to that program that is dna dna center device config collection this is the folder if i go inside this folder you will see that we have config.py you can see here config.py device collection.py these are the programs so if you go and check con config.py you can see this is the program here the selling this is the username this is the password and all and all and all and then you have the program. let me go to that particular folder i'm sorry let me copy this location let's go to that folder and uh, we are here and if i can go and open this uh, in my notepad or in my visual studio i have option to go and open these in different different uh, places so visual studio code i'll go there And uh, we need this. This is the main program, and we need this config, Oops. config file as well. So now we have these two. You can see config.py, right? And device collection. You can see importing different packages. Now your programming skill will come into picture. And then it is using some sort of DNA center SDK. These are the connections that it should have. And then the main function, what it want to do. So it will go and run certain APIs. It will go and run the API for device backup. So you can see here that device get device. Now it is actually very difficult and you will not understand in 30 minutes. But if you have programming knowledge, if you have API knowledge, then 
you can understand this. So uh, they have used this 500 because if you are running in big infra and if you have more than 500 devices, DNA, they have some page, pagination limit that they are not going to next page automatically because uh, in that case, you have to go and increase the device limit more than 500. So, so many things are here in this small program. So many uh, Python, you can say Python uh, skills are there. If you want to understand that, it will take minimum, I think, one to two months minimum to understand all these connectors and dots and you can see while loop, then if not, then for loop, then uh, exception handling, then file handling within the within the python you know these these are like uh, concepts when we are using while loop and the input and the output so why we are using this type of parenthesis why we are using this type of brackets and all those things you need to understand right at the moment i will go and i'll run this program and i'll show you that how you can run it in your infra as well, but to understand this 100%, you need some programming skill. And this is not like junior level programming. This is something like a, a professional level coding. Okay, no problem. So where we are, uh, config. Now you can see th this config, this config is uh, something that uh, you have to change as per your variable, right? So what is our URL? So let's go here and put our URL. That will be not this much, only this much. So we'll go here. Okay, so this is the variable file config.pi username admin and then the password. You know that just go one, two, three, four, five. Now the folder where it will go and put the backup, it is generating this, but I'll go and make this 2023. So that means this is our folder that we want to create, right? So now it is saved. Now next thing is this that you have to go and run this program. So you can go use Python and then device config collection dot py enter. Now, if you run first time, it will tell you that you don't have a DNS enter SDK install. In my case, I have DNS enter SDK install. In your case, it will be not. So you have to do pip install DNAC SDK. Let me show you that. What is that D DNA SDK? So if you see the import file, you will see the DNA center SDK. So if you are running this program first time, you have to go and do pip install DNA center SDK. So it will go and install this package in your laptop. Then you may have, you, you may not have this URL library. You may not have this, uh, date time you may not have the json all these packages you have to go and do pip install uh, json so it will tell you that okay json is already there if it is not then you, go, you can go and install like that in my case i have all these packages so it is successful now we have completed that program now you can see that uh, is successful it is telling that there is one device this is the device i have took the backup in this particular folder so if you go here from where you have you are running the program you can see this is the folder that program has created and then if you go and open now you can see this is the backup file that program has created for us this backup and if you want to see the content you can see this is the show run backup Right. So there are so many things actually behind the scene. So many uh, APIs, integrated API in this, which is running and which is generating the output for us.
Okay. Uh, so in case you are very interested and uh, you want to learn this, so I'll I can give you one other path as well. Um, one second. If you are using a Udemy for your study, you can go here. I have my programming course there, DNA programming course. DNA automation. If you search DNA automation, so you will get this ABC of DNA automation. And if you go and open, so you can see I have exp increased the font size. So in this, I have uh, introduced this uh, Python loop and all those things. And then uh, how we can set the lab in GNS3. Then uh, Python network related programs. All the scripts are there. Then basic of DNA programming. What is API? Then DNA API client program. Get the Mac inventory switch template runner and all those things. And then I have added some CCNP automation things here. So you now if you are interested to learn the programming and automation, then you can go and have a look on this particular uh, course. ABC uh, is this stuff start from, from basic stuff? It's from basic, yeah. It's, it's okay. From very basic, yeah. First, you're starting with Python, basic of Python, then uh, very basic. This is starting from basic, yeah. Generate the token, a small, a small program, 10 minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes. Okay. Okay, all right. So uh, I'll put the link here. If any any chance, if you're interested, you can have a look. Now let's go and quickly do the Aura report and then I will show my program, my big program. So here we are. Uh, if you are here in the GitHub, in the GitHub, what you can do that you can go and search DNAC Aura. So now R O A U R A A U R A. Aura. Now you will see this Cisco DevNet. Open that. Let me put this link as well in the chat window. What is this Aura report? Aura report is audit and upgrade readiness. So if you go and run this uh, report, it will generate one file with at least uh, um, maybe 70 to 80 checks. It will run within the DNA. These are the checks, checking Cisco DNA product, Num member ID, load, layout, space, IO, availability, memory, status, proxy, programmability, DNS, path MTU mode, all these things. 62 checks for uh, health and connectivity. Then you can see upgrade readiness, 19 checks. Then assurance, 15 check. SD access, 26 checks. DNS enter scale, six, 18 checks. More than 100 checks it will do, and it will generate nice PDF file that you can open that PDF file and it will tell you where you have problem and where you have uh, pass, like that it will do. Now, how we can go and run this report? So anytime, if you want to upgrade your DNA, Cisco will give you this link. And they will tell you that go and run this report, send that report, then you can go for upgrade. So how you can run this report? You can see it's very easy. First, you need this clone. This is program in DNA. So go there and let me go and open the DNA as well. So you should have admin access to your DNA. Where is my DNA? Okay. 
Okay. So we have to do the same thing, git clone. I think we have copied that command from the git clone and this URL. So it's generating that uh, cloning, copying that uh, program in the DNA. File size is 64, 28 MB. I think it's more than 30 MB. Uh, so big program file, it is cloning to the uh, DNA. So once this will be completed, then you have to run this program. It's very easy to run this program. But while you run this program, it will ask you different type of credentials. We will see that. So cloning is 90, 100% done. Okay, now we can go and check the, go to that uh, folder and check what are the things you have in the folder. So now you can see that you have DNAC aura within that folder. You know that how to run that, dot slash DNAC aura. Now if you run, it will ask you that what is the username. So I'll go and give admin and then the password. Now it is asking that password for maglev. Maglev password is the same in my case. So I'll go and give the maglev password. Now we can see that all the checks has been started. So it will go and do the checks. I did checking the IO throughput. I'll check number 12, like uh, the checks that you have. You can see here that all the checks it will do. You can see here the list of checks as well. So checking the health and connectivity, it will complete all the checks, then readiness checks and all the checks. So behind the scene, you can see it's going on. It will take some 10 to 15 minutes if you have full fledged DNA like DNA supporting 500 to, uh, to 1000 devices, it will take maybe 30 minutes. It depends that how much devices you have in DNA. According to that, it will go and take time. But generally it is taking 15 to 20 minutes in a production environment. In our lab environment, it will be completed in two to three minutes. So, this is okay that it is running some program, running some checks. The good thing about this uh, program is this, that it will go and generate a very nice readable PDF that we want to check. You can go and study that PDF very easily and any error is there, any bug is there in that PDF, it will mark that thing that there is bug, there is suggested action that you should go and take and all those things. So it's going on. Some more checks are going on. We can wait. Checks are going on, we can wait. You can see uh, he is telling that there is some possible bug hitting. And then it is taking the internal databases as well. Different, different databases are here in uh, DNA. You, you can see uh, MangoDB, InfluxDB, Grafana, I mean, some other tools are there which, which can go and generate nice graph and all those things. So Grafana is there. Yeah, different, different tools are there. You can see RabbitMQ, that is the messaging bus within the DNA. OK. 
Okay, it's going on. Seems more checks are going on. Which is going on? I can wait. Okay, so now it reaches to, it has some error here in this checking 82 unacknowledged message. So that's why it is waiting here. Three times I think it is sending some message and then it will skip that step and it will go to the next step. I can see it is there in 83. 84, zookeeper cluster status, cluster is a standalone. And then checking the elastic search. Now it is checking the REST API, REST API is responding. Here you can see this is the important place, Redis. Postgres is a database. What is Gluster? I don't know. MangoDB is database. Then app posting Postgres. RabbitMQ is messaging bus. Zookeeper, I don't know. Kafka. Uh, InfluxDB. Kong. All those are used within the, you know, we have the open dockers for all these packages. If uh, you know Docker and if you have some programming requirement, you can go and group those Dockers, those containers, and you can create your own uh, own set uh, of you know programming infra or um, what you can say. Say we can say that your uh, lab type of setup for all those Dockers for development. Uh, for developing any type of application. So you don't need to go and purchase uh, all those uh, heavy licenses to develop a program. You can develop all those programs with uh, free versions. And later on, if it is successful, then you can purchase the license and group everything in the same way. So we are, I think, almost done. It's almost done. Now, once it is done, then what will happen? By the end of this, it will give you one location. It will tell you that in this location, you have your report. So our report we have in this location, you can see this PDF. Now, if anyhow, if we can go and uh, um, if we go and do some uh, SFTP to this server, we can go and download this report. So let me try. I have WinSCP. And uh, SFTP to the host name. What is that? 198.1.8.1. Let me go and quickly check the IP. So IP address one nine eight one eight one two nine hundred. Okay, one two nine one two nine dot one hundred right or one hundred or two hundred. What is the URL? Okay, one two nine dot one hundred. Then admin and username and password. So username and password. I I'll try with Magle first. And then let's see. Uh, 
password. So one thing very important when you are using maglev, you should go and use port number two 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 four times two. Otherwise, that will not work. So one two nine dot one hundred. Username is Maglev. Let's try. Now you can see it is able to connect, and we should have some. Uh, I should go to that location where we have that folder, right? So let's see what is the location. Location is data temp dnac aura. So you should go to that place. Can I go there? Okay, one second, yes, I'm checking that how to reach. We are here in home maglev and we want to go to that location. We are, we are in root directory. So can I go to data? That's a problem. So I need to go to this location. I'll do one thing. Let's uh, play some trick. So we can use copy command. Copy this to home and within home uh, maglev maglev and enter cd home so now you can see it is moved to this maglev location now let's see that do I have okay so I can see maglev and now Within Maglev, I'm not seeing that file. I think I need to refresh this page. It should, be, it should work, right? Let me try. Okay, one second. So you can see that from uh, from this location, I moved this, right? This PDF file, which is along with DNAC Aura. So it should be here, but it is not showing here. We should have one more file. Uh, what we can do now, that this is Linux things I'm doing, right? So let's do one more time. So already we have file, right? If we are here, ls, so how to change mode, sudo 777 dnac I just want to give more permission much more to this. So now you can see this is everything. Read, write, read, write, read, write. This file, right? Now let's go to let's say read, write, read, write. Let's go here to win SCP. Why is it not showing up? 
Let me try one more time. Maglev. I'm not seeing that, right? Uh, we are Maglev user. Within Maglev user, I'm not seeing that due to some issue. I'll try one more time. I'll move this to the home folder. To home. Permission denied. Okay. A sudo. Okay. And I can see it's moved to the home. Now let's go here to the home. Some problem. Um, I don't know. Some problem is there. Uh, able to move the file, but let's go back here to the hardware console. Just allow me some two more minutes. Uh, do I have ISR 999 SDA as laptops? No problem. Let's go here. Hmm. To DNS enter. Wanted to see that what okay here also we have maglev. If you have full permission at the moment, I have some permission issue. If you have full permission, you can read this file. What I'm doing, I'm opening this file here in the CLI and I will show you one demo PDF file. So I can go and open this with cat. Obviously the format you can't read because this is a PDF format. But let me go here and if I have sample, I should have one sample file here. I can show you the sample file, how this look like. No, I don't have sample file here at the moment. Sample, sample. Okay, I don't have sample file at the moment. But once I have the sample file, then I'll show you. It's, it's very much looking like uh, these type of reports, but in detail. Let's see if anything is there in Cisco or a sample file. If someone has uploaded the sample file or even the Cisco side, if we have sample file, I can show you that file. Let's give me two more seconds. Okay, so yeah, we have done WinSCP, but unfortunately, uh, some issue is there, I'm unable to download otherwise i could show you that it's showing all those things okay i have some other uh, aura report i'll try to get it i will show you that in next session how this uh, pdf look like in meanwhile in your organization if you are able to run this report um, if you have permission, you run it and you can check that how this uh, file look like. Okay. Some permission issue is there. I'm unable to win SCP and get the report. It's not working in my case. Let me try one more time. Otherwise, I'll continue the session. Oh. 
see after manipulation it is working okay so let me go and put this report it's got downloaded here it is working now so once it is working it is here we should go and give more permission otherwise we can't download this right so 777 dnac now once you give this permission then you can move from here to my dnac non fabric okay and now i can open my folder i can go to this place and we have we should have that uh, aura report here it is now you'll see that you can see my screen you can see this is the report now you see error found check done 92 this is the report in detailed format check all the checks backup history whatever error is there it is telling you error 01 error 02 bug is there right and by the end of this file you will see some summary as well okay so this was the aura report you can check from your side running this report is very easy you don't need much programming knowledge to run this report okay no one is telling anything this is um Ray, you guys are there? Yeah. Right, so yeah, so it's programming, you know, it's a little bit difficult if you if you are not doing programming, then understanding each and everything will be difficult. But how to run this report? Anytime if you upgrade your DNA, Cisco will tell you to run this report. So this is something that you have to use. You will use in your working environment, this aura report. Rest of the things, programming and other part, it is actually difficult. I work in Cisco for at least uh, almost one year as a protocol tester, uh, maybe five, six years back. And then from last three years, I am doing programming related to SD-WAN, DNA, and Ansible. So that's why I know programming and I created multiple courses in programming. So I have that knowledge. But uh, if someone is new, so he has to put effort. It will take, minimum, it will take six months to become uh average in programming to become good in programming it will take time maybe one year two year three years and again it depends that how much programming we need as a network engineer as a network engineer we don't need everything so that's that's the thing what we need like this as a network engineer what we need to know at least the basic yeah basic yeah python a little bit of python. ansible yeah and that's why that course is there. If you go, if you can go and check that course, that is very basic related to DNA. And then same type of course I created for sd -WAN as well. Because API is something which is common everywhere. So if someone knows API, he can do the programming. I know that in my organization, I have an automation team. We have dedicated programming team. But the problem with that team that they don't know networking. They know programming, they know API because they know a few API, 